I recently had the opportunity to talk with Nathan Sheath, formerly of Facts and Arms. Now, Nathan's day in, day out is, is barrels, barrel treatments, barrel R&D, all around. So we got talking about round counts and how hot you can get these different treatments and what's going to perform better under different stresses. And I'm just going to let him introduce himself, and we'll get this conversation started, and hopefully you'll enjoy. So help everybody understand, hi, my name is Nathan with Facts and Firearms. I'm the Director of Product Management there. So part of my responsibilities are the research and development for the company as well as the product configuration. So on my side, basically means every day as I live and breathe rifle barrels. As everyone knows, it's Facts and Four. So we always get that question, is what's better, chrome versus nitride? Well, the answer is both and neither. And it's going to depend on what is somebody doing with the barrel to make that the better treatment or lining, depending on what you're looking at, for their individual application. So, for example, it's important for everyone to understand what the difference is between the two coatings. Um, I'll use the coating the word loosely here because nitride is technically a treatment of the steel. So for example, in a, in a barrel when you go to chrome line something, you're actually going to immerse a barrel into a bath that has chrome in it. And you have a very fine anode, basically an electrical rod that's running through the middle of that barrel. It's going to be electrolyzed and that's going to cause chrome to adhere to the inside of the bore. So basically you are building upon the already existing bore. So by that very definition, you're changing the bore and therefore you are potentially compromising accuracy by adding chrome to the bore. Now that said, so he says it's not as accurate. You can make chrome just as good as a base barrel and the guys who have been doing chrome have been doing it for a lot of years are really, really good at it. But if you take things, all things considered, you may lose say 2% of your accuracy by adding chrome to it. Nitride, on the other hand, is a treatment of the steel. It's something that also works both inside and outside of a barrel. So what you're doing is you're taking a barrel and depending on the nitrocarburization process, which there are many, you're going to immerse it in an environment that nitride is transferred from the environment into the steel. Nitrogen, pardon me. So what that does is it makes the steel harder, it makes it more abrasion resistant, it makes it more corrosion resistant. So if you go to say versus chrome, what you're doing is you are changing the base steel. You're not adding anything to it, you're just changing it. So in the cases we're basically locking in the barrel as it was delivered to the nitride house. So what that ultimately means is nitride has the potential to be slightly more accurate and especially works well because you can nitride stainless steels where you're not really able to chrome line stainless steels really well. So that means you can have excellent stainless steel accuracy with nitrocarburization, bore life, corrosion resistance, etc. So where the two come really into play and where you would make the decision as a shooter of, hey, what am I looking for? What's going to make the best sense for me? Is nitride works really well in semi-automatic platforms. So nitride does not handle fully automatic fire as well as chrome does. And when I say that, I'm talking about the extremes of temperatures. So something that only the military can really get up to by dumping multiple magazines or belts of ammunition through their firearm. You're talking about getting above 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really hard to do in a barrel. Nitride, when it hits those temperatures that nitrogen will do, it's called outgassing. It will leave the steel and you basically treat it like base steel. But if you have a civilian shooter, if you have somebody who does limited semi-auto fire, let's say 5, 10 magazines before it gets that hot, nitride is going to be an excellent choice because it's going to give you better corrosion resistance both inside and outside the bore as well as maintaining that base barrel accuracy as the manufacturer intended when it gets handed off to them. So when you're doing chrome, do you, do you make the bore diameter a little bit bigger? before you do the chrome treat to Ooh, add to that? That's a great question. So for chrome lining, there's actually two ways to really do that. You can make the bore purposefully oversized and chrome it down into specification, which is a perfectly valid way of doing it, as well as some of the more modern techniques do what's called an electro polish. So they're actually going to take a acid style bath and you're going to etch the inside of the bore and you're going to remove material that you're then going to replace with chrome. An electro polish can't have an advantage because because it's going to truly polish the inside of the barrel, trying to remove some of those machine marks that are left over from barrel manufacturing. But both are very, very good at making a treated barrel. So how about like longevity? If you're gonna run, say, 5,000 rounds through either one, which one's gonna have, what's gonna hold up a little better? Ooh. They're both within a single percentage points of one another, depending oh, so on... It's negligible. Right. 
Nitride, you can do a deep nitride. You can take it really deep into the steel. And same with chrome, you can make chrome really thick. At the similar thicknesses, they're almost identical for what a shooter is used to seeing. Cool. Except for nitride, you're going to get the treatment on the entire barrel. With chrome line, you're going to have chrome in the center, but then you're going to also have to do a separate treatment to the outside to have yep. the resistance to rust in the elements. Right. And so for most barrels, military barrels, it's a manganese phosphate finish that's on the outside of that barrel. So that's what we're used to seeing, that dull matte gray on the outside of military barrels. It's a manganese phosphate finish, which can be extremely corrosion resistant, but those kind of phosphate treatments need oil to treat the barrel to be able to maintain that corrosion resistance where nitride is oil independent. So if you're not, for example, if you're putting on a free floated hand guard and you're not going to take it off and you're not going to oil the inside of your barrel, I tell you to go do nitride. That way you can maintain that corrosion resistance on the outside of your barrel. Is there a price difference in the... Nitride is a little bit less expensive than chrome. Uh, Typically, it can be anywhere from 5 to $30. On the manufacturing side, there's an advantage for nitride, but it also depends on anything in manufacturing. What's the volume of parts that you're putting through? And you can get either one of those pr or processes reasonably inexpensive. Nice. So, what, uh, so at Fax and I, obviously, you guys have a lot of projects going through. What's, <laughs> what's, uh, what's some of your fun projects that you're working on? So right this second is getting our Glock barrels to the market. So focusing on drop-in platforms that we can help shooters get better quality than what the OEM delivered or features they otherwise couldn't have gotten. So for example, for Glock, doing standard rifling or conventional rifling so they can shoot cast lead projectiles and everything. So since you brought up Glock barrels, mm -hmm. from what I hear, and you know, I hear that basically there's like one or two manufacturers that actually do anything Glock. It's like there's a lot of people that are private labeling Glock barrels as their own, but it's really one manufacturer doing them all. Is that true? Yes and no. So there are definitely a lot less than people think there are, but there's also quite a few that are standing up their own capabilities these days. And it also depends on what you also say by making their own. So for example, there's far fewer companies in the country who actually make their own rifle blank. So that's physically putting rifling into a piece of steel. There are quite a few more companies who make their own barrel, but they're using Vaxxons or other companies' blanks that we manufacture on their behalf. All right, brother. Thanks for taking the time. My pleasure. If you have any other questions, let us know. We'll be happy to answer them. Sounds great.